I will not sit here and be lectured by the Vice President on what it means to enforce the laws of our country. I am the only one on this stage who has personally prosecuted everything from child sexual assault to homicide. The American people have witnessed what is the greatest failure of any presidential administration in the history of our country. Today, on August 15th, 2020, I stand before you as the first candidate for vice president of the United States of South Asian descent. People of India and to Indian Americans all across the United States, I want to wish you a happy Indian Independence Day. I will not sit here and be lectured by the Vice President on what it means to enforce the laws of our country. I am the only one on this stage who has personally prosecuted everything from child sexual assault to homicide. I'm the only one on this stage who has prosecuted the big banks for taking advantage of America's homeowners. I'm the only one on this stage who prosecuted for profit colleges for taking advantage of our veterans. And the reality of this is that we are talking about an election in 27 days, where last week the President of the United States took a debate stage in front of 70 million Americans and refused to condemn white supremacists. Not true. And Not true. it wasn't like he didn't have a chance. He didn't do it, and then he doubled down. And then he said, when pressed, stand back, stand by. And this is a part of a pattern of Donald Trump's. People of India and to Indian Americans all across the United States, I want to wish you a happy Indian Independence Day. On August 15, 1947, men and women all over India rejoiced in the declaration of the independence of the country of India. Today, on August 15, 2020, I stand before you as the first candidate for Vice President of the United States of South Asian descent. When my mother, Shamala, stepped off the plane in California at 19 years old, she didn't have much in the way of belongings. But she carried with her lessons from back home, including ones she'd learned from her parents, my grandmother, Rajam, and her father, my grandfather, P.V. Gopalan. They taught her that when you see injustice in the world, you have an obligation to do something about it which is what inspired my mother to march and shout on the streets of Oakland at the height of the Civil Rights Movement, a movement whose leaders, including Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., were themselves inspired by the nonviolent activism of Mahatma Gandhi. And it was during those protests that my mother met my father. And the rest, as they say, is history. Growing up, my mother would take my sister, Maya, and me back to what was then called Madras.
because she wanted us to understand where she had come from and where we had ancestry. The American people have witnessed what is the greatest failure of any presidential administration in the history of our country. And here are the facts. 210,000 dead people in our country in just the last several months. Over 7 million people who have contracted this disease. One in five businesses closed. We're looking at frontline workers who have been treated like sacrificial workers. We are looking at over 30 million people who in the last several months had to file for unemployment. And here's the thing. On January 28th, the vice president and the president were informed about the nature of this pandemic. They were informed that it's lethal in consequence, that it is airborne, that it will affect young people, and that it would be contracted because it is airborne. And they knew what was happening, and they didn't tell you.